could you repeat what you want us to put in the chat? How we spent what? How did you guys celebrate your New Year this time? New Year's Eve specifically. We'd love for you to come on video if you're comfortable with it. That's more easier for us as well. If you're not comfortable, that's totally fine. Stayed out home where I was safe. Yeah. I think I did the same too. Um, just my room, me and my roommates, we were there and we just played games all night. Busy enrolling for the spring term and stressing over assignments. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we all get we'll get we'll be getting our break soon. Went to a friend's house and watched the ball drop with a couple of friends. Wow, that's the most exciting one we have. That's funny, Vanessa. People who just joined, tell us in the chat uh, about what you did during the New Year's Eve. How did you celebrate it? We'd love to hear that. And if you, only if you're comfortable, feel free to come off on video. Wow, that's that's a great way to start a new year, I would say. Coding first time Python. Learning new things. I think we'll start in a minute. Uh, there are a few people who are joining. We'll let them settle in and then we'll start. Okay, all right. I think uh, we can start now. Welcome everyone. Hope you all had a good first week of school. We're so excited to be having everyone here with us today to learn Figma and do some hands-on practice. Uh, let me start off with a round of introductions of our team. My name is Fatima. I'm a second year graduate student in human computer interaction and design. This summer, I was a UX designer at Juniper Networks. And previously, in my previous life, I was a UX engineer. I used to code front end. So then I switched my career because I liked UX design more. Uh, that's pretty much it about me. Uh, over to you, Parvita. Yeah, thanks, Fatima. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Parumata, and I'm the lead intern for the web design team at CWIT. Um, I'm also a second year a graduate student in the human computer interaction program, and I have an undergraduate degree in economics. So I had a little bit of a career switch as well. I'm really excited uh, to be learning a little bit of basics of Figma today. We'll also be creating a small web page together. So excited to start a Figma. Um, Figma. <laughs> Fatima, you can take over. Uh, okay. Uh, so as part of CIVIT, uh, our mission is to empower women to be leaders in technical fields and to fully leverage technology to attain academic and professional excellence. Our teams hold a variety of events and workshops, everything uh, design and technology related. 
you are welcome to join our community by signing up for our mailing list that will be there in the chat uh, to get more updates about upcoming events and workshops um, without further ado let's begin the workshop so i will be sharing my screen do you guys see it can you all see Yes. yes. Awesome. Okay. So, um, welcome everyone. You've already met our team. One of our team members could not be a part of the event. So, she is another web design intern, Ebay Chang. Um, moving on. What is Figma? We would want to know your expertise level here. So, we're launching a poll here. Please feel free to answer it. Once you're done, we'll be ending the poll. I hope everybody answered. Okay. Okay. Let's end the poll. I'll share okay. the results. percent of you um, mark as nothing at all, and some of you said heard of it, but never used it. I think that's perfect. Um, it's for everybody, um, wide variety of range of audience. But uh, we will be specifically focusing on people who don't know anything at all or are a bit uncomfortable. So don't worry about it. Just follow along. Trust me, it's going to be easy. We are going to be asking you to be a little more out of your comfort zone and create an account and start working on the same page just because we want you to be comfortable with the software while you leave this workshop. So please, please, please go ahead and create an account on Figma. Uh, and then we will be working on one, uh, one, uh, one page altogether. Uh, and creating something. Okay. So what is Figma and why did Figma become so popular? One of the reasons why Figma became very popular was it's an efficient prototyping tool. You can efficiently design all uh, your uh, applications uh, screens from a very low level um, uh, you know, sketches a sort of an idea to a full finished design product. It allows real time collaboration. That means all of us together in the workshop can work on the same page together. Uh, so that that's something that was the need of the time, considering everything went remote. You can brainstorm together on the same page. Suppose you don't know what you're going to do and you want people to, you know, um, have some idea of what you're thinking. So you guys can collaboratively uh, do some brainstorming. You can do website design, you can app, do app design, and you can do uh, presentations as well, the slide decks that you do in Google Slides. That can also be done in Figma. With So getting started, um, I don't want to delay this any further. Um, go ahead and open your web browser and go to www.figma.com and sign up or log in. We've also shared a link. Oh, I think Fatima, you were muted. Uh oh, so um, once you got, I get few thumbs up that you guys have created an account and you are there in Figma dashboard, I'll move ahead. So I'll wait for a minute and wait for you guys to create an account. Okay, seeing few thumbs up. I need some more. You guys are going to create a document of your own, so you have to sign up. And there's a link to the file that we all will be working in in the chat. So if you click on it, you'll automatically be in that file after you've logged in. Could you send that again? I think I missed it. Sure. Whatever link you sent in the chat. Thanks. Sure. Just log into Figma and then I think I'll start in one more minute. So everybody is gonna create their own artboard there, uh, artboard frame or whatever you wanna call it. So be sure to log in. 
yeah i'm seeing a lot of people now a lot of uh, colorful cursors floating around in the file that's nice to see okay i'll begin now uh starting with figma i'll start with um, basically um giving you a brief introduction of what it is like so if you go to figma.com uh you'll see this panel once you've logged in so i've logged in it shows me my account here and this is the home page that you see once you have logged into figma okay uh for creating a new document you can go ahead and create a plus new file here okay um for now i don't expect you to do anything the initial part of the workshop would be you for watching me do stuff on the screen and then for the second half we will be doing a follow along tutorial so i'll let you know when you have to do things on your own for just now i want you to um see what i'm doing on my screen so that you get an onboarded you get onboarded to the software so this is the all projects page this is all the projects and all the designs that i've created these are all the pages that i have done so far you can create a new one by this plus icon and a new file will come i'll do that shortly then there's a community page here so there are a lot of plugins in figma that you can use um so this community page has all the uh, plugins design systems typography and different sort of things that you want to explore so for example i want to um, use stock images so there's a popular plugin that i use frequently uh, called unsplash so if i search for that plugin and um, i can directly click this link and install it so that's how it works uh, going ahead i will start by creating a new document as i mentioned um here plus and blank canvas i would rather select the blank canvas than any any template then here uh, in the top panel there are a few tools here this regions tool is called is the frame or the artboard that you are going to select where you are going to start designing so either you can select a custom size or you can select phone tablet desktop presentation if you click on this drop down it will appear here and say i want to design for android or say i want to design for um a desktop version so i can select my resolution and the artboard will appear so this is your playground for your design here you will be doing everything and anything that you want your desktop application to look like moving ahead uh, these are the basic shapes here the square shape the which you can directly if you hover over it here um you can directly resize it if you want to keep the dimensions as it is go to the corner edge hold shift and then do this so this is the mantra of keeping everything consistent with the uh, aspect ratio go to the corner hold shift and then when you see this corner double sided arrow you can resize it we are going to use this a lot when we design and do our follow along workshop then we have here um um i already mentioned about the plugin uh, and then the, like photoshop if you've used photoshop uh, there's a thing called um layers layers means how things are arranged one top of other if you don't know that that's completely okay i'm going to quickly demonstrate that so these are two uh, objects right here one is the rectangle and the other one is ellipse so the rectangle is at the bottom layer because i drew it first and the ellipse is at the top suppose i want to reverse the order order i just i'll just draw drag the ellipse downwards and that goes behind and the rectangle goes on first so that's how layers work so what you bring into the artboard first stays in the artboard and then it stacks on top of each other so you can change the order by dragging and dropping each other do you have any questions or anything feel free to put it in the chat or uh, come off as uh, out mute and uh, just ask questions okay moving ahead i think um, one of the things that you can do is uh, pinching in and pinching out like you do on a mobile screen you can either do this or i you i prefer to use these two fingers pinch in and pinch out to zoom in so if suppose you want to watch some details here pinch in and then pinch out that's something you can do 
this is also something that comes off as very handy because if you're going to follow somebody else uh, or if you want to see what your teammate is doing that's also something that you do then um, you can rename the layers from here so say suppose i want to call this photo frame i just click double click on it and i can rename the layer here so this is now photo frame and this is my uh, circular something what what whatever i want to say so th that's how you can rename your layers then uh, moving ahead you can either copy paste a shape you don't have to draw new every time you can just copy this one and control c or for mac users it's command c and then command v it gets pasted on top of it so you won't see it until you drag it here so if you use alt also that also works if you use command c command v that also works for copying and pasting a shape i hope that's clear uh, then moving on i think um, we'll get a little bit more into details of each one of them this was very basic of what i told you um, this is the text option here the text option uh, using the text option you can uh, write any sort of text and then you can zoom in or uh, the text option uh, has multiple um, settings here font formats so you can either increase the, as soon as i draw a square and write something in it you can either increase it to 40 or change the font to say anything um say um i like it uh, to be product sans or uh, you can change the color by this fill option um and then put point it towards any other color you can just enter the value of the color that you like the most and that also works what interesting thing you can also do is uh, for everything that you select color for there is a color picker so this color picker helps you select specific color from a specific image so suppose i want the color gray that is there in the background i'll choose the color picker i have the color picker in my hand and then i'll just go and click here so this became gray that was the color of the background so this is pretty simple and easy once you have uh, color picker for anything you can just select it for uh, anything around in the image or you can bring external images here and then um, uh, select colors from that importing images so if you want to import image here you go to this section go to file and then go to place image here it will open your directory and you can uh, you can have any image so i have the banner image of our zoom background I can select that and I, if I click here, it gets inserted. So you can either insert it here or drag it to this part and it gets a part of your desktop view. Another option to do that is just click this and then go to place image. So if you already click the frame that you have, suppose desktop one is the current frame, I already clicked it and then I'm gonna go to files and then place image. So it will automatically paste, paste it there. I don't have to, uh, worry about that okay uh, the next things here is we already talked about the top panel um, one more thing here is when you're collaborating among each other you would want to talk about your content about if you want any changes if you are not if you don't agree with something if you want to share feedback this is a very interesting feature here comment section so i can add a comment here hey i don't understand this text and comment. So if I commented it, everybody who has the access to the dashboard will be able to see this. And once this comment has been resolved, you can easily mark it this, you can easily click this tick to see all the comments. You again have to select this part. You'll be able to see all the comments on the artboard and a list of comments here in the right panel. And to, to mark a comment resolved, you'll just have to click this tick. So it has already been uh, resolved and the feedback has been addressed. So that's what you can do. Then you can also rename your file from here on the top bar. Um, just try. And I renamed my file. You can share the link of your file with your friends or whoever you want to add it with. Uh, either you can want to share it through a link, anyone with the link can edit it and then copy the link. Or you can just you know, change the permissions here to can view or can edit based on what you want to give and then enter the email address. So however way you want it to be. Then moving on, I think um, one of the important tools here is um, one second. Yeah. 
uh, how to um, build complex stuff. Uh, like say I want to build a snowman. How do I do that? So what I'll do is a snowman's image generally look like one circle on the top and another circle on the bottom. So I, I'm going to go and select circle here. I'll draw one circle. I'll hold shift so that it remains a circle and it does not become an ellipse. So I'm holding shift to have perfect dimensions. And then what I'll do is I'll maybe change the color of it. And then I'll control C, control V. So it replicated this and there are two ellipses now. I want the top ellipse to be small. So I'm holding the shift and reducing the size. But these are two independent circles. It's not a snowman's body. How do I combine that? So when you select one and then hold shift and then you select the other one, it selects both of the um, artwork. On the top bar, there are these few options that are going to come very handy. So these, the third one here, which is called Boolean groups, if you click on them, what you want is to combine these two shapes. So if you click union selection, it becomes one. What if you want to subtract it? Like what if you want to make, um, I will do control Z to go back to the original state it was in. What if I want to make it a, like appear like a moon? So I'll make it a bit bigger. And what I'll do is I'll select both of them and I'll say subtract selection. Oh, this, this became like a moon. So these are the different combinations that I can try either the intersection. So you see here some tiny icons that will help you guide what's going to happen with your figure. So if I do exclude selection, it will exclude the part that's intersecting and will show only the part that's on the top and the bottom. So you see this? Okay. Moving on, um, I think um, one of the important things for designing in the web is, I suppose I draw a rectangle, how do I make the edges curvy? How do I give it shadow? All that option is there on the right side panel. So here you can um, actually give this curved edges shows you to give the border radius. So I can either give it a value of 20 or what I can do is if you hover over it, there'll be a double sided arrow and you can just drag it and it's an infinite scroll and you can adjust it as long as you want it to be. Then um, um, if you want to give it some background effect like shadow or something, you can just click the effects panel and it drops shadow. I think I'll, I'm going to change the color of my um, square so that you're able to see that there's a shadow because it was overlapping with gray. So. I can also like uh, change the um, um, direction of shadow and the blur effect. So suppose I make it 30, you'll be able to see it more prominently. And if I say, okay, don't change the axis, Y and X axis of the shadow, just keep it just behind the image. Then I give them both zero, zero. And then maybe I can say the spread value to be 22. How much this uh, um, shadow has to be spread based on that. Okay uh then what we can do is um learning how to align something that's super important so i'll draw three rectangles here and then we'll see how we can align stuff and i'll also need some text to showcase how alignment works here so what i'll do is uh, so this box text is much bigger than my text here. I didn't know initially how long my text is going to be. You can easily resize it with a text auto with option here. If I just click it, it becomes auto with. So now I don't have to worry about my text side. It just automatically spans across my text that has been written here. So I'll click these two and then I'll demonstrate how alignment works here. So here, when I, I have to select one, two, three, all these three. So I'll hold shift and select all these three and then I will align it to left. So it's aligned now. You you don't see a note change because it was already aligned. But if I do this and do this, you see when I click this, it automatically aligned to the left side. If I do this and then again, I click the center align option. It will center align automatically between the last and the first text, it automatically center align or left align uh, now it because of this uh, the text is being equal it doesn't know where to align it to the left but now i have used the text uh, 
box size so if i say okay align it to the this side it automatically aligns it to the frame size for example one second i think i messed it up a bit for example if i align it if i keep it here and then i click this part it aligns to the right si left side of the frame uh similarly all these align icons work one of the most interesting part that i really like about these align items is if i select different shapes or any element and i want to align them with equal spacing among them what i do is these are the three lines here with the more option section i click there and i say okay distribute horizontal spacing since the horizontal spacing is not even and you see with one click all the horizontal spacing has been adjusted so it just calculates the space between the last and the first element and it you know uh, spaces them equally you you can do the similar thing with vertical spacing i'm not sure if the vertical spacing uh, is even here or not but yeah you can definitely do that so these are the options that you can explore here uh i think um this was mostly what i wanted to cover uh, there was another thing that's very cool and very interesting um that's called masking uh but before starting that i would want to ask if you have any doubt or any confusion or do you want any clarification on anything yeah even i'm not sure uh, maybe they are not aware that the roi if you want us to repeat a certain thing that you didn't get we are happy to do that as well Do you guys have any questions? Okay, I think I think we can move on. Yeah, okay. I think we can move on. Okay. If you still have questions, feel free to stop me and I'll be more than happy to repeat anything because this is going to come in handy when you create your actual page here. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again then. so this is something that i'm going to try is uh, a little bit more um, um advanced i would say uh, playing around with again i would write my name hello okay playing around with font so 40 is a bit too small maybe i'll try 200 to demonstrate what i'm going to do uh, and then i'll do auto with again here i can also play around with the font weights here i can either make it bold or for this font there are only two options available but maybe for another font there might be some other options like medium regular i just change the font and i can see more fonts so that all depends on the font that you are select selecting i'm sorry and then um, what you can do is you can also you can use this eye dropper tool to again change the font color so i can make it gray if i drop my eye dropper tool here or i can make it red or whatever color i want it to be then um suppose i want to center align this and i want to see what spacing here is and what spacing here is from the my artboard what i'll do is i click this and then i'll hit option here option on my mac keyboard for your if you don't have a mac you can use alt in that case and then alt will show you red lines here so see it shows me okay i'm at a distance of 596 from this part from right part and a distance of 352 from the left part so i can center accordingly and it also shows me when i'm centered so now if i see it's 474 and 474 but i'm not vertically aligned yet so i i would want to change that now i think i'm vertically aligned it's 357 and 357 now i am at the center of my artboard one important thing that you can do here is you can just click here um i would say it's it's not something that you would always use but it's a very fun thing to try out uh, just go and i'm going to use one of my plugins that i showed you initially that i installed it appears here when i go to the hamburger menu and then i click on 
plugins. So Unsplash was the one that has stock images. So I already selected hello and then I'm gonna go to plugins and then go to Unsplash. When I go to Unsplash, it opens this window here for me. And I will say, okay, I want plant images. Did you see what happened? It actually inserted a plant behind my uh, hello text. I can change, I can replace this image, I can do anything that I want. This takes a lot more effort in Photoshop. Figma simplified this so much. Another thing that you can do is um, masking. Uh, what is masking? Now, I'll um, quickly go through that. So what I'll do is I'll just import another image here. I'll go to file, I go to plugins, I'll go to my Unsplash plugin, and then I'll go to say nature photography this time. Oh, oh, it got inserted into the same thing again. Okay, let me delete that. Okay, Unsplash, go to nature. Okay, I have the image. Oh my God, it's bigger than my artboard. What I'll do is I'll hold shift and then I'll resize this one. Now what I'll do is I will draw a random shape here. Say a circle. And I want it, I want this image to be a part of my um, artboard. The image is on top of my artboard. It's not a part of my artboard. So I'll bring it down into my artboard. Either you can do this or you can copy paste in your artboard. So I, now it's a part of my artboard. I can lock it. Locking means you cannot move anything anywhere. Unlocking it helps me play around with objects on my frame. This eye icon helps me disappear the frame if I don't need to see it any longer. And then when I go here, click on the circle and say, I want to bring it on the top. So I drag it to the top here. And then I want to say, okay, mask this. Oh. So this option here is called the use as mask option. So when you select your image or your shape in the background that's there and you click use as mask, it becomes a mask for your image that you placed on top of it. And you can easily, you know, uh, crop your image in any sort of fashion or make it appear in that shape that you created here. So that's a very cool thing to do in Figma. There are a lot more things that you that we will be covering in our next advanced workshop. Uh, one last thing that I would want to cover is I think um, Fatima, I think we have a doubt. So let's address it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, hi. Uh, I just have a doubt. Like, uh, how did you get that uh, Unsplash images? Is it in built in Figma or uh, you need to plug in with any other? Yeah, you need a plugin. For installing a plugin, what you have to do is go to figma.com. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. When you go to figma.com, you see the community section here in the left panel. Okay. Uh -huh. When you go to the community section, you just search for your um, plugin if you know the name. If you don't okay. know the name, search for see stock images okay okay for stock images and then i click the plugin option here so yeah. it shows me all these okay. stock images mm -hmm. from here i can just directly install it so it's already installed so i won't see it yes but okay. say i want to install blush so mm -hmm. i'll just click on the install option once just okay. once and it shows okay it's installed then okay. when i go back to my artboard and go to this hamburger menu go yes. to plugins i will be easily able to see this blush option blush. okay okay and uh, can we edit this images? Like uh, if, for example, you were just showing that uh, sky with the nature. So can I change the sky color in the image or uh, it, is it not possible? It is possible. Okay. Uh, so when you go here, um, say, for example, I want to go um, and again, I want to... Any image. It can be any image. Yeah. So how you can, I think there are some restrictions. It is not as efficient that as efficient as Adobe Lightroom or anything. Oh, okay. uh, but uh -huh. then they, if you click on the image here. Yeah. There is this image. You click here. You mm -hmm. can either fill it, fit it, crop it, or tile it. These okay. are the options here. Then you can change the exposure of the image. Okay. You can change the contrast, saturation, and stuff like that. 
Yeah, uh, like for example, uh, there was one uh, white background back cell, right? So if I just want to remove that background and add some uh, pink color for that, so is it that possible for uh, to so edit the color? If you want to remove this background, okay. you'll have to install another plugin, uh, remove uh -huh. background plugin. Uh, you'll mm -hmm. have to play around with it. Oh, okay, uh, okay. You can't, you can't uh, just absolutely change everything and customize it. In one shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But you'll have to play around. If you want to make it more warm, uh, black and white, you play around with saturation, contrast, okay. then hues and stuff like that. Or if you really want to play around with images, um, I would say Adobe Lightroom is a better tool for that. Oh, okay. But some basic things you can do in Figma, definitely. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No, no, no. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think those are all the things that I wanted to cover. Um, we will be now starting. Um, yeah, there was one more last thing that I forgot. This pen tool is very handy. Uh, you can create a random shape out of it. So I just use it uh, like creating a polygon or anything. Why it is interesting is because you can also create curved um, shapes out of it. So if I click here and then I drag it here, it creates a curve out of it. And then I can create any sort of a shape that I want, any illustration, any anything. And then I can use this as a shape. You can also use, if the shape is fully connected and there's no open space, you can fill the shape. You can choose uh, whatever sort of, uh, you know, um, color you want to give it. You can also give it a gradient from here. You could go to color, go to the linear gradient Format and then from here you can actually give it a nice gradient, whatever you feel like. You can increase the transparency here and it gives a gradient here. I think that was a quick sneak peek at the tu uh, for the tutorial of this Figma work, uh, Figma software. Now what we'll be doing is a very interesting thing. We will be replicating a web page image that you see. Parumita will take you step by step, and I'm going to closely monitor where everybody is at. And I will ask you questions. I will, and you have to come off on mute and ask questions. You don't have to see Parumita's screen for following. She'll be vocal enough. But in case you get stuck, you can come back to Zoom because she, her screen will be shared. But I know it's difficult to go to Zoom, see what she's doing, and then replicate it. I would recommend just stay on Figma, see what she's doing. And she will also be talking you through this, like see in the left panel, see in the right panel. You can find this. If you don't find this, go ahead and ask. Okay, Parumita, I think we are all set to go. Yeah, before everyone jumps into Figma, I still want to share my screen for a bit and show you around so that we all know how where we're starting. So mm -hmm. just pay attention to my screen for a bit and I'll show you. Um, so this is what we're going to be designing today. It's a, a first web page for an ice cream shop. So this is Dora's ice cream. Um, if you see here um, on the same file that we shared earlier in the session, there's a second page called designing the web page. So you come here and there are a few frames already made for you. So each one of you can pick one frame and you can pick that and double click on it and rename it as your own name so that we know whose frame is which one and you can keep designing the web page on that frame. I will be following the C word frame. Uh, this is right in the middle. So everyone can just um, zoom pan around and look at what I'm doing right in Figma. So you don't have to keep switching back and forth between uh, the zoom and the Figma software. Also, if you want to customize your web page a little bit more, we have a number of options for the ice cream images. So you can pick any one you like. There's also a little logo that we'll come back to later on in the um, tutorial. And then on top of each uh, frame, we have, um, was someone asking something? Okay, I'll move on then. So on top of each frame, we have four colors 
which you can use uh, directly using the color picker uh, that Fatima talked about. I'll also talk about it a little later. But yeah, the colors are there for you to choose from on top of your uh, frame itself. And then finally, one last thing before we jump in. So these are the line options that Fatima also talked about. And this will be really handy when we align our text and images in the web page. So you have a little reference here to see uh, how to align left, how to align center, and all of these options are over here and will be on your right column on the top when you see in your software. So now I think I've covered the basic housekeeping things um, and we can jump into the Figma software now. Um, I can't really see chat that well. So if you have any questions or want me to pause, just come off mute or um, maybe Fatima will let me know and we'll uh, take a pause. Yeah, I have renamed some of the artboards with your names. Feel free to find your artboard. And if you haven't got an artboard, either you can claim one or I'll assign you one. And then let's start. Uh, yeah. Let me know when you guys are ready. Let's give it a minute. Yeah, we'll wait for everyone to take their frames. Uh, Fatima? Yeah. So the, I don't know what's happening, but my screen does not look like Parmita's screen. So all the frames are like extremely small in one corner. Uh, if you pinch with two fingers and try to zoom in, maybe you'll be oh. able to zoom in. Okay, yeah, that works, sorry. Okay, no problem. I've already assigned you a screen, uh, Anaga. Okay, thanks. So what, so we just have to like click on it or something? No, no we'll, we'll start along. You don't have to start yet. Okay, I cool. see somebody starting already and putting their favorite ice cream on the. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. No problem. No, no problem. problem. I'm sorry. No problem. Um, Let's start, Parmita. I think we are ready to go. If anybody who has not gotten a screen, please, please go ahead. Sejal, Raina, you can, Sara. Uh, you can just claim one of the screens and uh, we'll start in a bit. Yes, let's go. Okay, so I'll be choosing the same um, ice cream, the one that is there in the um, preview. And you all can copy paste so that everyone can take uh, similar ones if they want. So copy paste from the uh, above options and paste it into your frame. So cop control C for copying the image and then control V into your frames. Let's see, everyone can put it right in the right hand side and you can adjust the size by clicking on the corner of the image and holding shift. And then that way you can resize and choose a size that you think seems appropriate for your image. Let's see. Really nice choices, everyone. I like it. Let's go ahead. I think people are able to choose their ice creams and putting it on their um, screen. Yeah, just waiting on, I think, Sarah. Um, or, yeah, she's there. Okay, and also if you want to give a background color to your frame, like the cream color we have in the image, you select your frame. So click on the frame and you'll be able to see a blue border around the frame and you've selected it. Then just go to the fill color that is there in the right column and then click on it. And from the color picker, you can choose the cream color that we've given you on the top of your frame from the four colors that are there. Just choose the cream one. And yeah, I think everyone is able to follow. Let me know if you have any questions or if you get stuck. Um, I'm stuck. 
yeah, I yeah, can't, yeah. I can't find the five color option. Um, so, yeah, Fatima, you can take it. Uh, so when you click your artboard, there appears to be a right panel there. It uh, can you see that panel? Uh, okay, it was here until a moment ago. I don't know what I did to it. It so says. I'm, uh, I'm pointing it out in the screen share just in case you want to see. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I can see that. Yeah. Okay. But I think it says background on top of it. It's not the same thing, is it? Oh, yeah. You select the frame first. You click on the frame that you have. Click so name. click on your click name. On... Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Click okay. on your names and then choose the color that you want. You can uh, follow the same palette or if you want to add some different color, that's fine. You can uh -huh. customize it and make it your own. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah. All right. I see Vanessa is quite good at picking up. Nice job. Um, we'll move on to the title. So the orange heading that we have, Dora's Decadent Ice Creams. So to choose the text again, uh, go into the text option from the top left or the shortcut is just press T and you'll be able to uh, create a text. Just hold the key T and create the box in your frame of text or what you can do is click on the T option in the top bar. Either works. Yes. And so to increase the size, uh, you go into the right column again, you'll see the text settings. You can type in the number that you want. I'll be typing in 64. So if anybody wants to follow the same, you can type in 64 for your heading. And for the text, there's a lot of options of fonts that you can choose in the same settings tab at the right. I am typing Montserrat, so M-O-N-T-S-E-R-R-A-T. That's the font I'm choosing. You can choose any font you like, and I'll be making it bold from the same settings panel. So let's see um, if everyone is able to follow along. Donna, you stuck somewhere. Do you need help? Yes, I'm stuck. I am I, out no of problem. my comfort zone, which is where you ask us to go. So that's where I'm at. No problem. I think uh, that's the perfect stage to be so that we can help you. Uh, just you ha just have to select this box you that you created. Uh, that's orange color and delete it. I have to click on the box. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then hold delete. Press the delete key on your keyboard. Okay, you removed that, perfect. Now what you have to do is uh, click on your name to select the frame. You click on your name here. Can you see this? Yes, and I'm attempting to click on it and not having any luck. So when you click, Uh, I don't. I don't think your cursor is moving. Maybe it's an internet connectivity. Yeah, we can see it now. Uh, yeah, click on your name to select the uh, frame. Okay. Ah. Nope, that wasn't it either. You can zoom right into the I frame. Selected. Yeah, and now you just choose the fill color in the right column. There's an option called fill. You click on the box. Or background. Yeah. Then you click on the gray box that's there. Oh, uh, no. Uh, it says fill. And then you click on that. I don't have any of Did those. you find the fill option? No, I don't seem to have any of those um, my tools. Donna, you might want to come back to Zoom and see a little. Uh, I'm sharing my screen and I can show you where you'll find it. Okay, I have two monitors going so I can see your screen. 
Okay, so you click on the name here. I'm at Seawit. So I chose this. There's a blue border around this uh, frame now. And then okay. in the right column, so in the right column, there is an option called fill in the right in the middle of the column. And there is a light a white option with the letters and the, SF. yeah, the so alphabets. Should... Okay. Are you able to find it? I don't have a right column. I can see everybody's pain. I can see the ice cream options and the design options, but I don't see either the left um, layers, pages, desktop, nor the right design background. I thought maybe I had pinched it too far, but I've tried uh, going left and right and don't see that. It um, might be maybe hidden. I Hidden, yeah. Um, one second. So in that case, what you'll have to do is, I am watching for you. I'll get right back. One second. And it may yeah. have been I wasn't finished setting up the account. It's possible no, that no, you that might not have editing access. Let me see. Yeah, you have the. No, how did she? Yeah, she has the editing access because without that, she wouldn't have created that ice cream. I think um, the main problem here is you have your toolbar is hidden. My toolbar is too little. How do I make it bigger? One. Okay. So on the left panel, do you see the three screens in the corner uh, that are uh, that is like a hamburger menu in the top most corner? I don't think so. Okay, that is a bit tricky. Uh, do you want to reload it, like uh, reload the entire URL? Okay, I can try that. Okay, for those who uh, are able to follow along, you can, I've seen a lot of people have already changed the color of the heading, but those who haven't, uh, you can just use the color picker again to choose that orange color while we resolve. Uh, Donna's issue. And then with the same, uh, you can create another text box and write the subheading as well. Text over the objects. Is there like a way, do you just have to do another text option or is there a way to like put the text into it? Um, you can create another text box to write the second text and then adjust the size of that text to be a little smaller than the heading. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, or any luck, Donna? Yes, now I see the left and right. Awesome. Yes, yes. Awesome. Now you All can right. uh, just select that fill and change the color. So for those who are jumping ahead, um, again, uh, remember you can still align your texts. So select both of the texts holding shift and then use the first option on the top align left. That will help you align both the text to one, uh, one, I guess, column. And then you can also adjust the spacing between each of those texts by, uh, holding shift and pressing the up or bottom keys. And that way you can adjust the spacing between the two texts. So for me, I'm keeping it 24 and I can see by hovering it and clicking alt or option. Okay, I think a lot of you have already done this step as well. So let's jump on to creating the button. 
So for the button, we will be using two things. First is the background color and the rectangle. So it's a shape. And the second one is the text on top. So for the first step, we will create a rectangle. So just choose the rectangle shape from the top or the shortcut to that is R. So press R and then just drag your rectangle to the size you want. Let's see. Okay. And then you can also change the color of this rectangle to the orange that we've been using. Use the same option in the right panel. There's a fill option. When you select the rectangle, that fill option up there appears. Then select the color picker and use that orange. Perfect. I see Donna is also following now. Perfect. Great. And now let's make the button a little circular. So we use the border radius option over here. Uh, we talked about it, this a little bit earlier in this session. So you select that rectangle and then again, you go to the right column. So those settings are your like primary way you change. So you go into the top panel and there's this option called corner radius and it has a curved edge kind of an icon over there. So select the rectangle and then you can change the corner radius to as rounded as you want. I'll go really high and just create a whole rounded button but you can customize it the way you want. The rounded option is there in the same fill section where you had, it's just in the same panel, but on the top, you'll see a curved arrow sort of a um, image when you click a button. With that, you can just create a random, uh, a rounded um, corner. It's right below where X, Y, W, H is written. Uh, right below H, you'll find that option to make your corner radius. So if you hover over it, you'll be able to see that corner radius. You can give it a high value to make it more round, roundy. Okay, I think a lot of you are getting it now. Anybody has any questions or are feeling stuck? Let us know. We can take it slowly. All right, so let's add a text to this button. So since this is an ice cream shop, let's I'm, give it shop now. Yeah. I'm actually a little behind on the, the button part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, where are you? I am the second one on top, I think. Right now? Yeah. OK. OK. Yeah. So I guess you drew this rectangle now. Yeah. What you have to do is give it a color, right? Select the rectangle, click on the rectangle, and go to the fill option in the right side. Perfect. Now, uh, the rectangle is already selected. Maybe select it one more time. And go to the right side panel. Do you see stuff written like W, H, X, Y yeah. on the top? Right below H, there's um, the rounding option. Like it's it's an image that is that shows a round corner. I can um, say zero value. Yeah. Do you see that? Work. Um, it's below H. There's a curved line uh, as the icon for it. There we go. Wait. Perfect. Perfect. Cool. Okay. So now Thank we you. add the text. Sure. Sure. So now we are adding the text to the button. Just press T again and create a drag and create a text box right on top of the orange button that you created. And let's name it shop now. You can make it bold again and change the fill color to white so that it's a little bit more visible on top of the orange. And then yeah. following those red lines, you can align it to the center. Awesome. Perfect. Web page is looking really nice. Great job, guys. So you all had no familiarity mostly with Figma and now look at your screens. It's looking great. Okay. 
so let's move on i think there's just one thing we'll cover uh, the top navigation so you see a few options at the top home shop and contact let's make those three buttons uh, to help people navigate through your website so again create a text box press t and drag along and then type in home and put it on the top right corner you can again change the font uh, weight to from bold to a little bit of a regular or a medium weight from the text options again in the right column let's see wow gretchen your page is looking really pretty <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> of course. Awesome. And then again to create two more buttons you just control C control V and then drag it along to the side and that way you'll be able to create more texts and then you just double click it and change the content of the text. So I will name it contact and shop. awesome again if you want to align it you want equal spacing between each of the home contact and shop text you select all of them holding the shift key so select home contact and shop together holding the shift key and then you can use the align options that we talked about so you go to the align options go to more options and then select distribute horizontal spacing so i definitely got a little behind um no worries i kind of drew a rectangle with like the the pen but um I could make the outside of it orange, but I'm having a hard time like making the inside part orange. Oh yeah, yeah, I see you. So, um click on the rectangle and now if you see the fill option is uh blurred out. So you haven't added a fill and you'll see a plus icon on the right hand side of the fill. Just click on that. Wait, I Um, Should I click can, on like the inside or outside of the a rectangle? I think you've selected it, so just select on the orange part of the rectangle. Okay. And now you go into your right column settings. So you'll see that the stroke is orange, but there is no fill to your rectangle. So you click the plus button, which is at the right hand side of fill. Oh. Yeah. Now you can change the color to orange and it'll be filled. Oh, okay. awesome. Thank awesome. you. Sure. And then you can also give it a border radius uh in the top corner of the right panel. Uh just be uh, just below the width x y w h option you see a curved arrow. Uh from there you will be able to select it. The value should be set to 0 there. you can give it 20 30 40 whatever you want to get, make it more roundy wait <laughs> i'm so sorry say that one more time uh if you go to the right panel after selecting the box which you have already selected mm -hmm. um you'll be able to see the left rightmost panel do you see x y w h there yeah panel right below h there is a zero that set with a uh, with an icon of a corner radius can you make that value to 50 maybe 15 15 or i don't okay. think you will be able to see if you do 50 you will be able to see that i see you have already made it see there we go okay Not that bad right um so i think we almost out of time so uh 
hang on for a few more minutes and i'll tell you how you can export this as an image and keep it for yourself on your computer um and before that if anybody has any questions um we can address it right now right the amazing artworks everyone go ahead once again how to do that on splash yeah yeah sure sure um so when you open your figma account um on the left hand side there is a communities page so in the communities page when you search for unsplash when you search for unsplash you'll find this plugin and you just uh, install it for me it's already installed okay wait i think i this is the plugin so i'll install it from here and then i can go to the menu and from here i can choose plugins and then unsplash mm. we will be covering more of it more of how you can use plugins in our next workshop yeah play around with plugins so don't worry about that um if you are still behind you can either mail us or should you time with us we can help you we can set up another session intermediate session sort of a thing uh if you are stuck behind and we can like you know take individual attention on that but i see most of you i think have at least gained some familiarity with the software and i can see some amazing artboards uh some people have tried out a lot of creative stuff on their artboard that also yeah. i can see it's looking so, really great So yeah, I think yeah. one last thing that we'll cover is how can you export these to your computer and save it as an image. So when you click on your um, frame, is everyone ready to export? Should we do it? <laughs> Let's do it. I think okay. everybody's frame is a uh, we'll good state. yeah we'll keep this file open if you continue want to work on it but we'll just show you how you can export it and then at any point of time you can do it on your own so you select your frame again click on your name i've clicked on see it and i've uh, selected the frame it has a blue border outside it so everyone click on your frames and then again from the right column at the very bottom so the last option is export you press the plus button next to export and you'll see an option um which is already selected as png and there's a button called export along with your name of the frame is everyone able to follow give me a thumbs up or something so that i know awesome okay so you just click on export and then it will give you an option to save to your computer you can choose a folder wherever you want to save and then you can just save it to your computer and it will open up as an image so you'll have it for yourself to see your first work in figma and then compare it to how much you've learned along the way in the future we'll be having another workshop for advanced skills and we'll cover plugins in uh, detail in that we'll also cover a little bit of components and auto layout you don't have to worry about it right now but yeah it'll be coming um, maybe next month so keep a look out we'll share the links and the sign up sheets in our mailing list thank you and if you were not able to follow or you got stuck we will be sharing the recording of this event again and then you can watch it anytime and if you still have questions you can mail us on our official official email and we would be yeah. happy to answer it and one last thing uh, please give us some feedback i've posted the feedback link in the chat if you enjoyed it you learned uh, how to use figma we really really appreciate the feedback so please do fill it out Okay um, thank you everyone thanks a lot thank you for joining us on the export thing yeah oh yeah
you click on your frame that's where uh, okay. so whatever name your frame is of it will show you that yeah yeah it, my name's not on it i see like nine different frames but mine is not on the list oh i think you haven't selected your uh, frame so let's try again yeah let's try again no wait let me share my Just screen and share in the export section oh maybe control no okay which which artboard are you at the second one on the top i believe okay so just watch my screen i've shared it and maybe you'll get it okay so you click here uh, on your oh, name oh i thought you meant like on the left side where our names are oh yeah 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 um i think you can do that from here as well so just click on the frame so the the this icon which is like two horizontal and two vertical lines that's a frame Right, looking like a mesh, the mesh icon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let me go back. Okay. Okay, I found it. Gotcha. Awesome. All right. And then I, it's it's fine as like a PNG file. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Of course. So if anybody has any other questions, we'll hang around for a bit. Um, if not, this was all for today. Hope you all enjoyed it again. We're really happy you joined us and followed along the tutorial. Fatima, do you want to add anything else? Uh, that's all, I think. Thank you so much. We will be having an advanced version for people who are, who are not able to go and uh, ahead and felt stuck i would like to really uh, commend you it's not easy to jump ahead on a uh, art board and start doing stuff when you're not even familiar with the software i was personally very scared so feel free to try it out again and then reach out to us i think that's all that i have and definitely attend our next workshop and give us feedback the link is there in the chat guys thank you Thank you. Bye.